Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Local Homeschoolers Podcast, where you come for local resources and encouragement. I am your host, Autumn Frisbee. Hi, everyone. I am pleased to have Jamie Cogshell on the show today. Jamie is a local Palm Beach County homeschool mom, and she is the founder and the admin of the Homeschooling Palm Beach County Facebook page, and that currently has about 4,500 members. Um, and she started that about 12 years ago. This Facebook page really is a wealth of information for our local area. So if you aren't yet a member, please join um, to get encouragement and advice. It's really just a great resource for our our area. Um, So Jamie, welcome to the show. I'm looking forward to hearing your story. Thank you. So let's start by just telling the listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, as you said, um, I have um, I've been homeschooling since the get go. Um, I have two boys. We have always lived in Palm Beach County. Um, my two boys are twelve and fourteen um, currently. We have homeschooled all along. We've been living in Palm Beach County for over twenty five years. Okay, great. Um, and then, how long have you been homeschooling for? And we started homeschooling, I guess, when he was four. Technically, he never went to mm-hmm. preschool. So I guess maybe 12 years. Okay. And what led you to the decision to homeschool? It was kind of a weird situation. I was a public school teacher and I had always planned to go back to teaching. Um, I stayed home when he was born and then I just didn't feel comfortable with my little four-year-old going off without me. I really enjoyed being home with him. And so I decided to just start investigating about homeschooling. And I really felt the heartstrings pulling towards starting something and just spending time with him. And then we had a toddler come along, a little newborn. And so it just made more sense to stay home and homeschool versus trying to find childcare. And Mm -hmm. I was just taking it year by year. And each year I just had the confirmation to keep going. So it kind of just grew out of my desire to spend more time with my boys. Mm -hmm. And did you have any concerns when you first started um, your homeschooling journey? Definitely. I thought for sure that um, I wouldn't be able to teach them to read. As a teacher, I taught older kids, not uh, little kids. I don't have patience for little ones. So I thought for sure they would never learn to read or to write, that they wouldn't be um, equipped as uh, productive citizens when they get older. But that has not been the case. How has your homeschooling changed over the years? Um, Have you gotten to be more confident in the choice to homeschool? Yes. I had a lot of mentors along the way and kind of taking their advice and looking at what works with our family. I'm definitely more confident in the homeschooling and knowing that the kids learn what they need to learn and that they have little brains that just soak up so much information that it is, it is amazing what they can actually learn and get without actually being sitting at a desk and reading workbooks and doing worksheets and not doing necessarily traditional school that they can learn so much more by just experiencing life and through conversations of just pulling out questions and having them think through things and just logically coming to conclusions. I think they learn a lot more and they internalize the um, education that they're getting and that information versus just memorizing it for a test and just checking it off, that it actually becomes part of who they are. They're constantly learning. So I didn't have to, um, I didn't hold them to the standard of what would be necessarily in a third grade class because even in a third grade class with 20 students, there's 20 different levels. So I wasn't too concerned um, on a day-to-day basis of, oh my goodness, my son's not doing cursive yet, or oh my goodness, my son doesn't know his multiplication tables yet. I was kind of like, okay, in the long term, they will get these. In the long term, they will learn these skills. And so it was just kind of taking it day by day Um, We have struggled. There have been days where I was in tears crying to friends of, I've ruined my kids. They can't read. They can't spell. They can't do this. And then I pick it back up and we start over again. And it's just a day by day. I think every day just moving one step further down the path 
um, is a is much easier and bigger than you can see the end result versus um, trying to look ahead and being discouraged of, oh my goodness, we're not there yet. But looking back and saying, wow, look at the progress that we've made. Mm -hmm. And I think that's huge for a first time homeschool, um, you know, family to just not look at the fu at the future too far ahead. Yes. Because that can get a little goals. overwhelming. <laughs> Yes. Oh, definitely. When we have our yearly goals, we have our semester goals of this is what we want to accomplish. But then I also don't beat myself up if maybe we didn't get to chapter five in math by Thanksgiving break and we're only halfway through chapter four. That's okay. Mm -hmm. We still have gotten through four and a half chapters. Okay. What can we do to kind of finish to go through? Um, so looking at those type of goals, but not worrying about, oh my goodness, at the age of seven, my kid can't read four chapter books, you know, in a week, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. and not freak out that they will get there. Okay. That's great advice. Thank you. Um, what are some of the best resources that you've used um, in terms of curriculum? Yes. Um, curriculum, we do classical. So we do classical conversations. So we've enjoyed the classical method of curriculum. Um, I do enjoy a lot of reading. So whether a curriculum like Sunlight or Abeka that has a lot of good reading books that we do a lot of read alouds. When my kids were younger, we sat on the couch for hours and just did read alouds, did audio books, just that rich um, literacy environment. I think at the younger age adds a great foundation. And with math, um, I've really enjoyed um, the different maths when they were younger. We did more of a hands-on math, so like a math you see where they're actually taking blocks and building. In the intermediate age, um, upper elementary, we switched to more independent where they did um, an online with um, teaching textbooks. So they were becoming a little bit more independent in math. And now that they are in, um, they once they started pre-algebra in middle school, we went to a live teacher online, um, Mr. D is the math we use, so that they're getting um, a more independent, they do a live class, they do his work, they take the test, so that that's kind of pushed off to there. So that's given me the confidence in the math um, because I can't do upper math, but I'm learning because again, I'm the teacher, so I do have to sit with them and go over their math if they're not understanding it, but there's great support out there. So I think with curriculum, the best advice I can get give is get something that works with your family and with your time schedule and with your child's learning needs, because that's where they're going to be the most productive. And if you stick with something and it's not working, change it, but don't change necessarily every other month because your kid does need a good foundation but finding something that works with your family. And it could change every two years, every three years, but you want to find something that just works because when it works, it's successful. Mm -hmm. And that's really good advice. And I think, like you said, don't be afraid to change it um, if it's not working, but kind of stick, you can find what works for your family and for each kid. We tend to do the same, but I have found that my involvement with each boy is different where one of my boys' math is his strength, so he's much more independent, where the other one definitely needs my help a little bit more, and so I have to sit with him and go over um, problems and quizzes and tests more than the other and just pull it out of him. Um, and as far as you mentioned mentors, um, talk to us a little bit about finding that and getting that support. Um, I know that you started the Facebook page for Palm Beach County. Um, you're also a member of PEC, which is Parents Educating Children. So talk about how community um, has really helped your homeschooling over the years. I think community is the number one reason why I have been able to stick with homeschooling and have felt supported. Finding a mentor, somebody who's walked the path, whether it's two years, three years, four years ahead of you is so important because when you have those days, which we all do, where we just don't think we can do it anymore, we're struggling, we know we can call somebody who's been there and who has done it and can help us walk through it, give us advice, um, 
and just be a friend, community to me is the number one thing. I have people who I am mentoring now, people who I'm in the same stage of life where we can just joke around together. And then I still have mentors who have have kids who are seniors or who have graduated their children out since I'm beginning that high school stage. I need to know about the different things. And so I've always kept up with um, a mentor and then mentoring, mentoring people. I um, find that without a support system, you feel like you're in a pond drowning by yourself and you just can't make it day to day. I love PEC. Um, I am involved in it heavily. I was, it was one thing that got me started in homeschooling. I started going to their park days. I found friends. My kids found friends. We would go on field trips with them and just kind of have fun and started just being able to meet like-minded people to be able to start this journey with. And then they've now become lifelong friends in our homeschool group. Um, it's kind of run like a co-op. So we have, my boys have friends in that. I have mom friends where I do mom's night out. We get together, we go on retreats, we do dinners just so I have that mom support because you, you realize you're not doing this alone. And then they are somebody who can, um, help you when you are looking for a curriculum or you're just, struggling with discipline or you don't understand how to do transcripts, people can be there for you and you're not out there having to think, you know, you're the only one or you're just Googling it and you're not finding the answers. I think a face-to-face -face group where you meet up is a lot stronger than having just a support group online. And then the community, um, tell the listeners a little bit about your desire to start the Homeschool Palm Beach County Facebook page. It was just a desire to get um, people from across the county together for field trips and encouragement. It started with about 100 members of just people I knew from PEC and um, our co-op, and we started it and it was just kind of one of those things where it was like oh let's just have this and so people can come on and post when they have a field trip or a great um uh play date or we had like gymnastics and ice skating that were just t geared toward homeschoolers and so it was just more for to get together to just find those resources and it's morphed into more than that, like you said, with over 4,000 members now, where it is across the county. And there are people who are new to Palm Beach County and want to know what are some great co-ops or field trips or park dates or different um, pods, which is a new thing coming out in homeschooling. Um, people don't know the laws, and so they're able to go on and find resources there. So it's just become a great resource for many different types of homeschooling and different people who homeschool for different reasons that they can find like-minded people and be able to connect that way. So as the monitor of that page, what are some of the things you're seeing um, lately now that there's more homeschooled families? The main thing I'm seeing now is the pandemic definitely changed the face of homeschooling in a quick way. And so a lot of these things that they're calling pods have started popping up where to me it's more of a hybrid type homeschooling. And so that has been a big need for people who are trying to pull out of public school and find a way, but they're not ready to quit their job or they're not able to necessarily do the traditional homeschooling. So that's been a huge um, change I've seen. I've seen a lot of virtual um, meetups that have come along um, on the homeschooling page. The biggest thing is people not knowing the laws and not knowing the requirements. And so that has been a big question that's been coming up on the Facebook page is how do we homeschool? How do we start? Are we allowed to do this? And so I think that's been a huge help to people is having 
other mentors and people who have walked through it being able to speak into um, all of their questions. How else have you seen the local homeschool community change over the years? Oh, it has more than doubled in size over the past 10 years. Um, there, it used to be a small group who pretty much were homeschooling for one or two reasons to now um, in Palm Beach County, by the droves, people are pulling out and homeschooling, even if it's... Um, more of like school at home through Florida virtual or just pulling out and doing unschooling. It has definitely increased. What are a few words of encouragement for any parent who's on the fence to homeschool? Um, you can definitely do it. Uh, one day at a time. It's very, very rewarding to build a relationship with your kids. And I always say that homeschooling if you're doing homeschooling and you are the one that's really pouring into your kid the majority of the time, then you're going to build a relationship and relationship is more important than anything else. I know with my boys, we have a good relationship. They have a relationship with each other. Uh, we talk things through. They're not away from me for six to eight hours a day. I know what their interests are. I know who their friends are. I know, um, what social media things they are on because they're in my house and I'm here with them. And so we have a very good relationship. And I think that is the number one thing that I appreciate and that I'm so thankful that I've been able to do is to build that relationship, especially looking at my older son, ninth grade now, four years going away to college, that I cannot get back those younger years of not, you know, if, if he had gone away to school, I would not been able to get those years back of being able to spend time with him. And as a new mom being able to do it, you can one day at a time. And if it's a bad day, put the books away and go to the beach. It's okay. They do it in public school and missing a day, missing a week. When my son was younger, we fought over math. So we stopped doing math for eight months and it has not hurt him. He's still two years ahead in math now. It's not a big deal, um, but you can definitely do it just one day at a time. Find your community, find your tribe is what I tell people. Find your tribe, find your community, and you can do it. That's great. Well, thank you for that encouraging word, and I'm sure people will be inspired um, by our conversation today. And um, just to know that they're not alone and we have so many resources in Palm Beach County. So I appreciate your um, time coming on and also just um, the encouragement over the years that you've showed to the community. Thank you for tuning in to the Local Homeschoolers podcast. If you would like to share your homeschool story or have a local Palm Beach County resource that you would like to share on the podcast, please reach out to us at localhomeschoolers.com.